Hey guys, welcome back to the roof. We have the eaves on, we've got everything airtight and watertight, and the tests prove that. And now we are building the lattice on top of the roof that is going to be for ventilation and attaching the roof to. And I looked into this and I, all the pictures I saw were of a lattice that is two layers, one that goes this way and one that goes this way. And I thought that can't be the best way to do it. And I experimented and experimented in 3D modeling and finally have come to the realization that that is the only way to do it because we are putting on roofing that goes this way. And just like when you're putting siding on a house, you need something that's going the opposite, the perpendicular direction to be able to attach to. So I tried to cut it in half, but that's just not gonna work. So first thing you're gonna need is blower because the roof is covered with little bits of gunk that you're gonna wanna make sure not to step on, number one, to penetrate this stuff. Um, and also to make sure that it's not going to get underneath your tape. You are going to be making holes in the roof. And so for sealing up this Solatex Mento, I have little squares of Vanna tape, which is the same exact material that this is, even though it's a different color. You make a hole, you notice a hole, you seal it up, not a problem. This is also a really good time because I'm this far away from the roof to notice any small holes that I might not have seen before uh, that are, result in um, some leakage inside. Once we blow, we're gonna put on this Tescon Nadek tape, which is a double-sided butyl tape uh, that is for self-sealing any penetration. So where this tape is, if I drill or screw through this, uh, whatever I put through that hole will seal. So it's not gonna be a water leakage issue or an air leakage issue. I'm using a roller uh, for putting this tape down. It really adheres well and kind of fills in the terrain in this Mento at which point I'm putting on the core event. We're using sturdy strips, which are 3 8 inch thick corrugated plastic. This is very crush resistant. And at the bottom and top, we're putting the screened vent. It's called SV3. And it's got a screen built in. So the holes on this run this way, and the holes on this, which is gonna be along the edge of the roof, run this way. And again, the screen is to keep bugs out and debris. At the connection of the eaves, to the roof, we've got uh, the straps that are 30 inches long, and I'm gonna show you how attaching those becomes really easy. The main issue here is that I was stressing out for a long time about how to find the structure underneath this, the skeleton that lives underneath several layers here. And it turns out to be a lot easier than I thought. So in general, our planning has been very intense and you know thoughtful and then we get out in the field and it turns out that this is not only just a one person job it's actually a lot faster and involves a lot less steps than i thought first i'll show you what we tried which is totally unnecessary this was starting out to be a two-person job i've got something heavy at the top to uh, weight down what is at the bottom hanging off the edge of that roof is another something heavy just to keep this line straight then, because I was worried about how long this would take and how many days would pass between the marking of this and when we would get through, we're in the rainy season right now, instead of just marking a chalk line, I went ahead and got a spray paint wand and we would mark out where the top and the bottom of these joists are, making sure that we were on it the whole way down and that the, the eye joist wasn't taking little winding pathways on the way down. Then we would spray this so that you could see the line right in the middle of where all that is, and just did that again and again and again. I stopped doing that because number one, totally wasteful on spray paint. I started trying dotted lines and I started trying skinny lines and fat lines and the whole thing was totally unnecessary because at that point I started figuring out that if I just moved this slightly to the side and I knew that my rafter was right here, I could just have the line there and then tape. That also, totally unnecessary because this is, it takes an extra bunch of time. So I'm gonna show you what really works at this point. One thing to note is that this Mento 3000 membrane that's sealing the roof, there's this kind of high-tech innovation that they came up with, which is this adhesive strip that's on the back side of the bottom and the top side of the top. And when you lap them over each other, the two adhere to each other so the tape is built into it, that's great if you're using full sheets and you're lapping them perfectly. But if you start using scraps, as you can see here where I'm, I've got the eave built out, this would be sticky. I had a plastic backing on this that of course is floppy and it's gonna pick up lots of pine needles and dust and stuff like that. It's gonna sit right here and that might become a place where water's just gonna hang out. I don't want that. 
And so of course I had to take the backing off, at which point now I've got really, really sticky stuff for all of that gunk to stick to permanently forever uh, until it rots. And so what I had to do is come along with dust of my own, and I used diatomaceous earth, which is just a gardening product, and had to pump it and pump it and then rub it in to deactivate this very powerful acrylic uh, adhesive. So that's just a downside of some of the like very cool innovations that some companies uh, undertake. It was nice for some things, for other things, a total nightmare. So I'd say that this I, I'm not a huge fan of after having used some scraps. Now, instead of worrying about marking out with a string line where all of this is, I can absolutely just find this by knocking, which is the old fashioned way. I can use my fist, which is also the old fashioned way. I have tools, I'm not a, an ape, so I can do this a better way. I've got my roller with me, which I have to use anyway because this stuff needs is pressure activated. So I need to be able to press it in. Uh, and all I have to do is start at the bottom. This is also a really good stretch. Uh, I'm enjoying my, my life today. It's a nice day, not having to wear a hard hat because nothing is on top of me. I have marked out where the uh, joist down there is here. So I've got a little bird mouth uh, mark. And then I can find where the end of the joist is that is, makes up the eave. Normally, for somebody who makes a PBS television show, brands being plastered all over everything is a nightmare. It's kind of the bane of our existence. Um, but in this case, since there's writing all over this, I'm gonna use that writing to find where this stuff is. So I just made my localization of where the rafter is, and I can see that it's on this mu symbol down there. I think it's mu, I never took calculus, but I can start there and meet it up with where my mark is right up here, give it a quick pass, and then press down to make sure to really activate that adhesive. Now I simply take a scoot up, use my roller. It's on the very end of my Connect logo right here, and so I'm just going to press it down there. Light pass, heavy pass, and so on and so forth. And when you're done, you should be able to look down this strip and see the semblance of a very straight line that would be the joist underneath. Ultimately, it's not important whether you're floating a little bit, half an inch to each side, because number one, this thing is two inches wide and my dimensional lumber underneath is an inch and a half. And also, if I miss later, I will be able to just angle my fasteners. As long as I'm fastening through this butyl tape, I'm not hurting my weather barrier. I'm gonna stay oriented this way. This is just a little nerdy tips and tricks if you ever do this or have a crew doing it. I stay down slope the whole time. So when I hit the, the peak, I'm gonna turn around the other way and be scooting down the other side the opposite way. Now I'm straddling the edge of the house right here. The enclosure is this way. The eave that we added on in one of the last couple videos is here. In order to make this work, the structural engineer spec these 30 inch straps. And on these gable ends, this is a rake wall, we have these 30 inch straps that are echoing blocks that we put in. So we basically switched the orientation of the joists on the inside, the roof rafters. I did not take the backing off this because it's really not important that the backing, that this tape stick to the strap since I'm nailing the crap out of this thing. Every single nail hole is filled with 10 D nails all the way out. This was very sturdy to begin with, but now it's like the ground. Yeah, I'm very impressed. The strip that's going here needs to be over some kind of a structural member. So I've got it over the edge of the house, which has got a ledger on the outside and a rim board on the inside. There's a kind of a big block sandwich there. So this I need to have be over this because that what I'm gonna come along with in a minute is the lattice that runs perpendicular to this. This gap is not important because the lattice is going to go over these strips all the way down until they meet up with the opposite end, which is exactly the same as this with these little one cavity deep cross members. I'm going to put another one of these here. This one happens to be located right in the space, the middle of this strap has no nails in it. And so I will need to drill if I want to be able to attach my 
uh, lattice that's the one by fours through to this. I'm gonna have to drill through every one of these, but I know for a fact that I'm number one over a structural member and number two, I'm not gonna hit a nail because that would be bad. So out here, I'm gonna add another core event sturdy strip outside of this so I don't have to drill. And I'm gonna use the exact same sturdy strip at the edge as well. Because of the flashing that's gonna go here, I don't need to use that screen, the SV3. And for these strips that are gonna go on the edge here, I'm just taping directly to the sturdy strips and then adhering them down instead of running the tape first. Uh, by the way, this gap that's left at the top, I don't care about because the perpendicular pieces are going to just come here and up at the top. Up here is another detail that I just wanted to point out. We're gonna have two inches of exterior rock wool insulation on this wall, which is a very tiny wall now that I've added this eave. Uh, so I'm gonna add this insulation and I'm gonna actually keep on going up into the eave just to bolster the roof insulation so that my insulation layer is continuous and that's one of the principles of sound building science and enclosure uh, building. So in order to place this SV3, the vent piece that's got the screen there at the top edge, I wanna make sure that I'm not putting that up inside of my uh, rock wool because obviously then it's not gonna breathe at all. So I built this little jig that's going to help me locate two inches of rock wool and then the full depth of this because first I'm gonna put down my sturdy strips and I need to place them so that the end of them is no closer to the wall than the end of this. Then I come back along and I can add the SV3 at the top. At the bottom of the slope, I'm going to need to put in the strap as well. But, uh, and here I am going to remove the backing, but I don't want to remove the backing at the very bottom because if I'm adding in the sturdy strip and I'm going to have the SV3 at the bottom, if I put it in now, when I'm still several weeks out at least from my roof going on, I'm gonna have a little ledge here for all of the crud that's gonna land on this roof to end up piling up. And it's gonna absolutely clog those pretty little vent holes. So that is gonna be the last thing that I do. So I made this little block that is exactly the uh, depth of my SV3. I'm gonna cut the backing so that I can just remove what I need to to make this work at the beginning. This 30 inch strap, probably any size strap, has a little middle section where you can see there's an extra space. That's gonna need to go right in the middle there. So I'm gonna place this in the middle of my tape and midway across my seam. Now that this is on, I can go ahead and adhere the first sturdy strip over the metal strap and I'm just pushing it down to make sure that it adheres until I get along to the horizontal strapping. So then I keep on pulling this backing up and just track the uh, sturdy strips all the way up until I get to the top, leaving the room for the vent at the top as well. The final piece is the one by four furring strips that we are going to be attaching the roof down to. So I'm gonna be using three inch nails with a, an impact driver. Uh, and this is important because I wanna be able to listen to the sound of what this does. So if I am going to be screwing down and I might miss the joist underneath, that didn't sound right. It should sound like this. That's the sound that you want. So if I was to drive one that does not, it obviously does not hit a structural member inside, I leave it. I do not remove it because then that would leave a hole. So I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna drive a secondary one because all I need is one place to be able to attach my roofing to. This is probably gonna be a standing seam. It's a metal roof, 24 gauge in any case, you'll see that in another video. But as we come along with this, we're gonna need some place to drive one screw in every 16 inches all the way down the roof. And so I've got three and a half inches here I can put two of these screws in and not have a problem. We've left plenty of room to attach something to. So as we go, this is just easy as pie. You just keep on going. Any place these two things intersect with each other, I know I can drive a nail anywhere within that intersection because I've got the butyl tape behind it, which is located over a uh, roof rafter. 
So all that to say, the planning of this was really onerous in my head. It was very, very intense to try and think through all of this. Once we're here in the field and doing it, it's actually a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be, which I'm very happy about because this is it's nice to have things go easier than you thought for once. I hope you've been tuning into this build of the house. We've got over 60 videos in that playlist. Uh, please do comment, like, and subscribe. Tune in next time.